cover him now. I'm sure. Wait, let me. What fifty seven? Now I'm sure people. When you speak of Gwendozi, you know many people. He, he, he's one that polarizes opinion. Some man rate him, some man don't. Um, but I think Gwendozi could have been a good option here. Definitely when you look at our midfield, like, you know, Xhaka's in good form. Now in these last three games, we all know where we're at with Granite Xhaka. You know, um, El Nene started off the season well, but we already knew he was, you know, it wasn't going to last long. He's playing he's playing form and things like that. He's not levels. So Bios not keeping that permanently. You know, part A30. Joe Willock's had chances not taking them. You know, there's not really any midfielders. Now, I want two midfielders. If you go out and get two midfielders that can replace, you know, the, the ones that are being used this year, then fine. Sell to Rare, definitely to Rare and, and Gwendozi. Um, but I still I still think we're we're making a call on Gwendozi very early. Now I think it's and it's it ironically, I agree with if this is what's happened, I agree. If if it's a thing where Gwendozi just pushed Arteta and pushed Arteta and pushed Arteta and pushed Arteta. It, at some point, as a manager, you can't be asked. It's a bit like when you look at Balotelli or Chesney under Wenger. The ability is there, but at some times, it's just too much of a headache. And as a manager, definitely at Arsenal, with all the stuff Arteta's had to do and all the question marks, you don't want to be dealing with all of these things and then have to deal with if Ar if, if Gwendozi's, you know, being mature and things, stuff that we heard, you know, he was running a mockery under Emery. So I get it. Arteta clearly knows Gwendozi's levels because he's thrown him in at the deep end in big games. I feel Gwendozi could... Have, I think we're making a call too early, you know. Clearly, we've loaned him out because he don't have a future here. He's put himself in the shop window. He's contracted until 2022, as you can see here, people. So a decision has to be made, Um, you know. I hope Arteta and him can bless the beef because I feel, you know, I don't think... I don't think Gwendozi and Partey is the most is is the best partnership, but I think it's better than what we could have think, had here. I just I think when you know, assuming Saliba comes back next year, you know, hopefully Gwendozi could come back. I think those two could tie into what we've got with the Smith Rolls, with the Sackers, the Martinellis, Maitland Niles, and all of these sort of things there. Um, and also resale value. You know, Gwendozi's been on the cusp of things with. We, with France, I think we're going to have to take an L with Gwendozi. I think it's going to end up like being Buendia, Buen, Benassia, where he's going to become a 30, 40 million pound player. Um, like I said, I understand if it's got to this point, but I hope time can be a healer and Arsenal can mend wounds and, you know, Gwendozi, like, like, like El Nene, can come next season and be involved. But we're going to have to make a decision quickly. He's contracted until 2022. He put in a good performance at the weekend and scored. Um, I think this is to put him in the shop window. Hopefully, you know, Arteta is seen he could have handles things differently. Gwendozi has definitely seen he could have done things differently. Hopefully, time has been a healer. Um, hopefully, we're able to use him. And for me, you know, you all saw he scored and he dedicated it to his girlfriend, who, you know, and his soon-to-be child, you know. Um, he's having a little daughter. Now, Maybe that's the thing that makes him. We apparently people talk about Gwendozi's immaturity. Maybe that's where you see a, a change in my man. He's becoming a dad now. Think your priorities change. You have to kind of set an example, and that could obviously tie in because I do like Gwendozi. I think he leads by example. I think for all his criticism, he's one of those players that gets it. I still think when I'm looking at Gwendozi, you know, he's he, it's not that he needed to. You're expecting him to develop greatly at, at, at in Germany. He's just been given a, a a platform to play on a regular basis and showcase his talent. And I think you can see that once again. The only problems I have with Gwendozi is he's so poor defensively. Like in in the in the transition, he can't tackle. He's very kind of feeble in that regards. But I would like to see Gwendozi. And like I said, surely it's a better pivot than we have. You know, than we have available to us. Um, at this moment. And like I said, he's of the right age, the right temperament. You hopefully there's a maturity there. I hope I don't I hope we haven't given up on Gwendozi. But for me personally, I feel when you look at it, Terrera's gone, you know, Gwendozi's gone, you know, and the rest of the usual suspect people, you know, Sabios, Sabios gone. You know, Xhaka needs to leave before Gwendozi. He's been linked with a move away regardless and should be moving. So gone. You know, El Nene be contracted until 2022, might be allowed to run down this deal and be a squad player, but in an ideal world, gone. You know, I've already put Ceballos, Joe Willock, you know, unless he develops dramatically loan, but he would probably stay. So again, you know, who is your only midfielders? In an ideal world, who's your only midfielders that you think, you know, it's party. And he play by himself, you know? So then for me, you bring in a Matteo, you know, I'm dream chasing here, but let's just say you had Matteo, you had Aoua, you know, you have Partey, you know, for me, 
you have to get a Terrera like person, you know, in terms of ball winning. And it'll be calm, man. But I'm not too sure in that regards at all, people. I'm not too sure in 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 that regards at all, man. I, I don't want to give up on Gwendozi, people, because he's got. He, he just needs to calm it down, you know. I, I, the worst thing is if Gwendozi had people that understood Arsenal. He, all he needs is a slap on the ears, like I like what you're doing, Gwendozi. Calm it down, like who do you think you are? You've been involved in first team for a second, people. I like Gwendozi. I think he's got the temperament. I think he stands up to be counted. I just think he needs to find balance, you know. He just need he needs balance, sort of thing, but. He's gone, man. And for me, they, the, the club killed me with letting Banasio go. They found me a next man in Gwendozi. They're killing me again. You, these are my favourite sorts of midfielders, man. These guys that try and build play and things like that. I still think there's a lot of definition to do with Gwendozi. Is he deep line? Is he box to box? Do you think goals and assists? He's, well, he's technically got two this, this season. You know, how often did he score for Arsenal? So it's improving in a sense, but it is what it is, man. And there's no when I look at Gwendozi and, and, and stuff, it kind of it's a bit different because his attitude has cost him. But when I look at Gwendozi, at Smith Rowe, at Saka, there's not really anyone in and around the club that they think, yo, you gotta fix up. You gotta like like I said, if he had, you know, if he had a couple men around and that could just clip him on his ears and, and stuff and tell him to calm the F down, he'd be better. And to be fair, you've got a Bami and Lacazette people that he was close with. Not too sure why that didn't happen, people. Um, so yeah, that's that in relation to to Matteo Gwendozi, people. Um, so yeah, man. 